Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I am going to uh, present to you a very tough challenge and I am sure you are going to love it and uh, it, it's definitely a tough challenge but once you are able to do it you will definitely feel a lot of joy after doing this problem. So without much ado let me straight away present to you. It's a very nice problem and if you can figure out the geometry I am sure you are going to be filled with a lot of joy. So. Here comes the problem, the ultimate AC challenge or you can say the mutant challenge. I modified some existing problem to make it even more beautiful. So let's see uh, the problem. Okay, so in the shown circuit, the reading of AC voltmeter is 150 volt each when connected between any two points across CD between C, D and E. So whether you connect your voltmeter between C and D or you connect your voltmeter between D and E or you connect uh, between uh, C and E. In every case your reading is how much? 150 volt irrespective of whatever two terminals you choose out of C, D and E. Okay. Calculate V. We have to find the generator voltage based on this information and also calculate the possible individual voltages across each circuit element R1, C1, L2, L3, R2 and R3. So we also have to calculate the possible values of uh, AC voltages across each element separately just there is one number in the entire problem and you are supposed to comment on so many other numbers. So if you want you can give it a try uh, and I am going to present my analysis right away. If you just want a hint maybe you can just start drawing the phasers and uh, see if you can figure out the entire thing. Okay so let me present my analysis okay. So what is the concept here? So first of all let us see. Uh, what does the phasor diagram of series LR circuit look like? Because you see this has got three series uh, circuits. So this is a series uh, CR circuit. This one is a series LR circuit and this one is another LR circuit. So let us eat the elephant bit by bit. Uh, so let us see what happens when we just have a series LR uh, connected across an AC generator because it is just a superposition of uh, three uh, circuits containing two elements each across the AC generator. Okay. So we know that in an inductor the voltage leads the current and the resistance is in same phase as the current. Okay. So all of this is standard fact so that inductor uh, leads the current and uh, uh, in resistance current and the voltage are in the same phase. Thus drawing the phasor diagram according to the triangle law of addition. Okay. So let us see uh, in this branch let us say current is I2 then you know that the inductor voltage is going to lead I2 and uh, inductor and the resistor voltage is going to be in the same phase as I2. So I am uh, going to draw it in the triangle law of addition form. You know that phasors behave very much like vectors. So we can add phasors also like triangle law. So let us say I2 phasor is in this direction then V2, VL2 phasor must be at 90 degree to I2 and then VR2 phasor must be parallel to I2. So normally we draw the voltage phasor with the common tail in the parallelogram law of addition kind of configuration but for some reason here I have drawn the voltage fa phasor across R2 according to the triangle law and uh, then this is the net voltage phasor. We can also do that okay. So you know that vectors can be added either by triangle law or you can add them by parallelogram law. So deliberately I have tried to use this configuration for some geometrical uh, uh, I want to exploit some geometrical facts here okay. So I hope this part is clear. So, uh, so the inductor voltage in this case will uh, lead the generator voltage right and uh, resistance voltage of course you can see resistor voltage will be lagging behind the generator voltage because the two voltage phasors together have to uh, add to the generator voltage okay. And now I, I can also draw the same diagram taking V on the horizontal axis. Here I had taken I2 on the horizontal axis but if I want I can also take the V on the horizontal axis. So uh, if I take V on the horizontal axis how does this look you see. This entire tri entire triangle you have to bend it a little bit so that V come becomes horizontal and then uh, this is how your diagram looks like and I have uh, deliberately uh, drawn a circle to bring out some geometrical intuitions in the problem okay. So of course uh, this is VL2 and this is your VR2 and this is point A and this is point D. So voltage of point D is accurately represented by the phasor AD relative to the uh, voltage phasor across AB that is the generator voltage okay. And semicircle is drawn just to bring out some uh, geometrical interesting things that are going on in this problem. Okay. Now uh, 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 just like uh, we can draw the LR circuit diagram uh, phasor like this. So similarly you know that in capacitor the voltage 
lags behind the uh, current okay so if i were to take i1 current then the voltage in capacitor would lag behind and the voltage in this resistor will lead the generator voltage and so that overall their vector sum will be same so somewhat so capacitor uh, phasor would somewhat be in the uh, lower semicircle something something like this so this will be the capacitor voltage behind the generator voltage in a similar fashion just as we have a right triangle in the upper semicircle for lr circuit we can have a right triangle in the lower uh, semicircle for the cr circuit by exactly the same logic so if you want you can pause for a minute to just think about it what i said about the how to handle the rc part on the same circle diagram okay uh, i hope uh, that part is not very tough because all of you know that uh, cap in the capacitor the uh, voltage lags behind the current by a phase of pi by 2 okay so similarly we can draw the diagram for top branch and bottom branch on the same circle so now i have completed the entire diagram so this is for the you this is the same thing i draw vl2 and vr2 uh, on the this uh, total voltage phasor and now i also have the lower branch l3 and r3 so this also i have drawn so this is your vl3 and this is your vr3 again this angle will be 90 degree and then i have drawn vc1 and vr1 for the lower uh, branch uh, so capacitor voltage and the resistor voltage so this is the kind of circle diagram you expect and uh, you might be wondering why i have drawn it to be an equilateral triangle and uh, uh, why this line is horizontal so those things are coming in a short while because uh, that's how our problem works see uh, it was given that vde is also 150 volt vcd is also 154 volt and vce is also 150 volt so that means what subtraction of these vectors so if you see if you take suppose a as zero potential b as v potential so phasor difference of all these things uh, will be uh, the, these dotted lines right so like uh, voltage between d and d is nothing but difference of this phasor that is AE phasor and the AD phasor, that is your DE phasor, right? So DE phasor and uh, CE phasor and uh, DC phasor all are equal to 150 volt and that's why it had to be an equilateral triangle. So I hope you understood why this looks like an equilateral triangle because it is actually an equilateral triangle. It is intended to be an equilateral triangle although my drawing is not perfectly to the scale, uh, doesn't look like uh, but uh, just assume for a while that it's an equilateral triangle, okay. So I hope you got uh, why it had to be an equilateral triangle and now why this equilateral triangle with VDE being horizontal? My claim is that VDE is horizontal. Why? Because if you look at the question statement carefully, let me get, take you back to the question statement. So here's the question statement you see what is said. Is that it is known that voltage between one of the pairs selected from C, D and E is in phase with the generator voltage, right? So that means either V, C, D is parallel to the generator voltage or V, D, E or V, C, E. One of the three is parallel to the generator voltage. That means what in this triangle, one of the sides had to be parallel to this one. So if, uh, and of course, uh, two voltages had to be in top semicircle because there are two LR uh, branches and there's only one CR branches. So the only uh, possibility we are left with for the horizontal uh, uh, branch is uh, this VD. So v, so this branch is horizontal and then this, then this is an equilateral triangle and now it's just a matter of geometry to figure out all the voltages. I hope you understood why this is a triangle. So let me just uh, read out. So points worth noting is just as it was shown that voltage in L2 was leading the total voltage similarly it can be shown that voltage in C1 will lag behind the net voltage as I told you about the why this uh, capacitor RC diagram is in the lower semicircle okay that's what I've written in the language here then DE phasor must be parallel to the AB phasor because it is given that one of the three voltage phasors is in phase with the generator voltage AB so I told you why uh, DE is horizontal okay. So that's what I've written in the language. And third, CD is an equilateral triangle because VCD is equal to VD is equal to VC is equal to 150 volt. Now we just need to solve for various phasor lengths and geometrically uh, how we can do that. You see, uh, this is an equilateral triangle. So this angle is 60 degree, this is 15 degree, this is 15 degree. And this is the midpoint, okay, because D is horizontal. So this and this. So this angle, these two angles are 45 degree each, okay. So little angle chasing, you can e easily figure out geometry and let's say you mark the center of the circle as O, then uh, you draw the uh, line joining, uh, these all are along medians, it's an equilateral angle, so whatever center you want in center or, or also center, uh, whatever center you want to call it. So these three lines are, are inclined at 120 degree each, so this is 30 degree, this is 30 degree, okay. And now things are very simple. Let's say R is the radius of this uh, circle. 
so then o e b is an isosceles triangle and you can draw an altitude to figure out the length e b so this angle is also 15 degree this angle is also 15 degree and this is r so this is r sin 15 and r sin 15 so e b becomes simply 2 r sin 15 right so uh, that's what so let circle radius be r then d e is 2 r cos 30 d e so d e is this and you see this angle is 30 degree and then if you draw this this is 60 degree this is 30 degree so d e is nothing but 2 r cos 30 degree right so that's what i have written d e is 2 r cos 30 degree and uh, i know that d e is 2 r cos 30 which is also equal to 150 volt and also a b is nothing but 2 r so generator voltage is this this is 2 r and this is 2 r cos 30 so now we can easily figure out so a b upon d e is nothing but you divide these two you get v upon v d e v is the generator voltage and v d e was uh, 150 volt so v by 150 is you divide them so this comes out to be sec 30 degree so that gives you generator voltage 150 sec 30 degree okay and sec 30 degree is how much so uh, sec 30 is root 3 by 2 uh, rather 2 by root 3 so you get uh, uh, okay so 150 into sec 30 sec 30 is uh, yes 2 by root 3 so this becomes 300 upon root 3 and that you can simplify so generator voltage is 100 root 3 volt so this is one part okay uh, we have figured out successfully the generator voltage okay and the radius of the circle is 50 root 3 volts now uh, coming to the other voltages all these lengths we can work out easily so ad and eb so ad and eb both are equal and they are 2 r sin 15 degree as i showed you by drawing the perpendicular here and uh, that's approximately 45 volts you can just put in the value sin 15 and similarly ae and bd both these things are equal so this is 2 r sin, uh, sin 75 degree you see uh, this whole angle is 75 degree and uh, uh, then you can draw normal over here. So this is R7 sin 75 and R sin 75. So this whole AE becomes 2R sin 75 degree because this whole angle is 150 degree. Okay. So 2R sin 75 degree. If you solve it, it's approximately 167 volt. And AC and BC are equal. So AC and BC both are what? Uh, they are equal to 2R sin 45 degree. Okay. So again, this is R and you can draw up a perpendicular 45, 45. So this is 2R sin 45. So that is. 122.5 volts okay so now that we have worked out all the phasor lengths we can write the voltages so this is your vl2 vl2 we are is nothing but ad so uh, just writing down the voltages instead of the lengths so these are the voltages that we get vl245 vr2 167 vl3 167 vr345 vc1 122.5 and vr1 122.5 now uh, this is uh, one of the solutions you can see that uh, since branch ADB and AEB are similar both are LR branches so you can as well swap these two uh, values so you can for, uh, swap 45 for 167 this 167 for this 45 because the in principle there's no difference in between branch ADB and AEB okay so that's why I've written that VL2 VR2 set can also be swapped by VL3 VR3 because uh, in principle the branches look similar so that was my analysis for the problem beautiful problem i thoroughly enjoyed doing uh, the analysis doing the geometry and i'm sure you enjoyed this problem as much as i enjoyed presenting it to you and uh, most importantly and of course i enjoyed solving it and uh, also setting the numbers and uh, making this problem uh, enjoyable for you okay so if you did uh, uh, like my analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your uh, fellow uh, friends who are preparing for je or olympiads and most importantly if you've not already subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel right now uh, because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video for all of you frequently and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you